Hey guys, hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Argon Mining back here with an update on our Bitmain Antminer KS5, most powerful CASPA miner. Uh, about a week ago, we took delivery of this from Viperatech uh, and set it up just with stock fans and as it comes from the factory. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below so you can go through kind of the unboxing and setup. Today, what I want to cover is upgrading the cooling system on this ant miner. So we are going to be removing these two stock fans on either side, intake and exhaust to the unit, and we're going to be replacing them with Fruition Designs shrouds. These are 3D printed shrouds that are about the same size uh, as 240 millimeter fans that come stock, and they replace those two fans on the intake and exhaust side of the miner. Now these miners won't start up without fans connected to the control board. So we've got to get inside this control board unit and remove the fan wiring for stock fans and replace them with some fan spoofers. And if you see here, these are old fan spoofers that I've used on numerous Bitmain machines, but they use the traditional kind of horizontal four pin uh, fan connector and these new machines use a four pin that is more similar to a PCIe uh, type connector. It's actually identical to the four pin CPU 12 volt power that you'd put in a motherboard. So I went ahead and got some special span, uh, fan spoofers from Nakamoto Mining. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can look at those if you need to. Um, but I'm curious to see how these work because this fan spoofer comes with four units in a single board. Uh, there's no way to break up that fan spoofer board. So I'm not sure if the adapters here will actually re reach the right spots on the control board or if I'll need to take those adapters off uh, like this one here and connect it to the individual spoofers. So to get this upgraded, we're gonna go through multiple steps. First, we're gonna take off the front panel and the top cover of the control board. So we can get in here to the control board, see where these uh, stock fans connect on that control board and see how we are gonna replace them with these fan spoofers right here. If that goes well, we'll rip off these uh, 240 millimeter fans on either side. We'll replace them with those fruition design shrouds and then connect those to some ducting work that we've got in the garage connects to an AC Infinity fan blower that will actually provide cooling. And then obviously on the exhaust side, we'll have that uh, ducted to the outside so that none of the garage overheats. So first step here is opening up this control board. What we've got to do is take out this screw right here and this screw over here. So there's two Phillips head screws in the front right there. And then on the other side, we've got three more Phillips screws. So again, one here, one here, one here. This is not a button, but it does in fact hold that faceplate on. So we've got to kind of push it in to get that faceplate off. So what I'm going to do is take out those five screws, get this control board exposed, and then I'll show you guys exactly what those fan spoofer uh, connections on the control board look like. And we'll figure out which one of these fan spoofers work. So let me get this control board opened up and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got our control board exposed on the KS5, uh, and I actually misspoke on the number of screws. So on our faceplate, we did have screw one and screw two that we had to take out. Uh, on the back side, though, the two on the edges are not required to come out. It's just this single uh, center screw here that holds that button in. So you've really only got three screws to take out uh, to get to that control board. And lovely to see all four of these fan connectors are right in a row. So we should be able to use the single control board just like this with them bent over just a bit. So what I'm gonna do is connect up these fan spoofers to that single control board and get them plugged in right here uh, and unplug the stock fans. Uh, and again, that's one, two, three, four white four pin connectors here. This other one is your power. Do not remove that and do not remove the signal to the PSU. These obviously go directly to your hash board, some of the most important pieces here. So we just wanna unplug these four PCIe four pin connectors, replace them with the fan spoofers, and then we'll be well on our way to taking off the fans themselves. So I'm gonna get these uh, stock 
uh, connections removed, get the fan spoofers put in, and then I'll give you guys a look at how that actually fits on that control board. All right, so we've got all of these stock fan connectors disconnected, and we've replaced them with the four adapters to the CPU four pin that connect to this spoofer control board. So we've got that there. I will cover up some of those uh, exposed leads with some electrical tape just to make sure we don't have any shorts there. Uh, and we did have a couple zip ties to remove. So we had a zip tie on this power cable that was holding these fan connectors in. So you're gonna wanna remove that so that you can easily uh, disconnect these fans. Similarly on this side, we are gonna have to do a little bit of surgery to get out those uh, connectors through that back plate here. Uh, so we'll get on, get on to removing those in just a bit. But all four of the fan spoofers connected just fine. And we wanna make sure that this thing uh, actually works. So my next step is to very carefully take it back out to its power and see if it starts up. We don't have any actual fans connected to this. And now that the stock fans are disconnected, it will very quickly get hot. Run this thing for less than 15 seconds just to make sure that it boots up and recognizes the fans. So I'm gonna go out there, get that done, and then I'll be back here uh, with details on how to get uh, these fans off and the shrouds put back on. So we took the uh, KS5 out to its power slot in the garage and it booted up no problem. Uh, saw it on the uh, internet uh, light, the ethernet was blinking there. So everything should be good. Next step is just to get off these fans. So I need to remove this wiring for these exhaust fans first. I'm gonna need to take off the PSU cover and then work those uh, cables underneath the power bus bar right there. So I'm gonna get those removed and then I'll walk you through how to actually take the fans off and get these shrouds put on. All right, so we had two screws here. One was hiding underneath the fan cabling. So both those screws came out uh, and then these fan uh, cables just slide right underneath those bus bars if you turn them horizontally. Uh, so we've got those out. Now our next step is to get these fans off. So we've got eight screws, four on each fan, uh, eight on each side, total of 16 screws to remove. Now I've got one of these off to show you the length and this is what we're looking at. Uh, these are gonna be too long for the fruition design shroud to connect. So we've got some other shorter screws that are the same uh, thread and width size uh, that are gonna go in there to hold in the shroud. So first step, get these eight screws pulled off. The fans should come right off. Be careful about the grills. They are separate pieces here to protect your fingers. So keep a hold of those, make sure you don't lose them. Uh, get off those 16 screws in the fans and then we'll be back here to start putting on the shrouds. Here we go, we've got our fans off. So you can see those four stock fans and their four pin connectors. And we've got uh, actual visual side of the hash boards, which is always fun. You can almost see through the machine there. Um, so we've got that on both sides. And then I went ahead and put our uh, PSU cover back on and attached those two screws there to catch us up. So our next step is to attach one of these uh, fruition design shrouds to the uh, intake side and to the exhaust side. So these shrouds use the same hole connectors, screw holes, as the fans themselves. So if you look at one of these, you got two on the top, four in the middle there, and two on the bottom. You're essentially lining this up with your fan uh, screw holes and putting in those shorter screws to attach it there. And that's gonna create a seal against the intake and the exhaust of the machine so that we can force cold air through there with an AC Infinity blower fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these attached. I like to use the uh, connection part here for the exhaust itself. Uh, it's a little bit easier uh, to use that as an exhaust that can connect to, uh, you know, I'm, I apologize, I'm backwards. This is the intake. We wanna connect this directly to the AC Infinity blower fan because that blower fan will sit inside this uh, connection hole right there and then this will easily connect to some of our duct work as an exhaust. So I'm gonna get those put on here, get those uh, 16 short screws you see there uh, installed, and then I'll give you a, a look around and see how it looks with the shrouds itself. All right, here we are, almost done. We've got both shrouds connected. You can see those 
screw holes are used just like they were for the stock fans. So I basically just got to get our control board cover reinstalled and that's going to be our reverse order, right? So we're going to put this on first, get that first screw connected to the back. We'll slide in the faceplate and connect those two screws last. From there, uh, we'll get it, this out to the garage, back to its spot, and we'll start working on some ducting work and connecting that AC Infinity fan so that we can test some serious cooling on this machine, see if we can get some better hash rate. So let me get this uh, control board covered back up and I'll see you guys in the garage with some ducting work ahead of us. All right, so we've got it back out to the garage and uh, shrouds are on and what we basically need to do is turn off this AC Infinity fan to keep our hands safe while we're working and remove the ducting work from this fan. What we're gonna do is essentially put the miner in between that duct work and this fan. So the disconnected fan will come over to our intake side, connect there, and this ducting work will clamp on here to take all the hot air straight outside. So I'm gonna get that connected and I'll show you guys the finished product and then we'll look at some uh, noise and temperature differences on the computer. All right, I apologize about the noise, guys, but it is much better than it used to be. The AC Infinity fan is connected. We can see that spinning and actually pulling in air there. And uh, our ducting is connected as well, and that's going straight outside. We can feel the air movement there. Bitmain Antminer KS5 is on, and we've got some ethernet activity. So I need to go jump on the computer and check the uh, moment of truth here and make sure it actually registers and is hashing. So I'll meet you guys there and we'll talk about potential performance increases, changes in the noise level in my garage, as well as some temperature changes as we're getting ready to go into a hot, hot summer here in Southern California. So I'll see you there at the computer in just a minute. So we're back at the Antminer web GUI here to look at the temperature and hash rate after we've installed the uh, fruition design shroud and use that external blower fan for some better cooling. Now I have let this run for almost three days just to get some serious uh, reliable numbers uh, that we can look at. And hash rate on the web GUI itself isn't doing much different. And this makes sense, right? The Bitmain firmware is what actually limits the hash rate and controls the speed and frequency of those ASIC chips. So we're not really going to see a terrible increase on hash rate just from better cooling. Now, that being said, it does affect our sound tremendously. Um, I don't have a decibel reader that I can actually show you guys the difference in noise in the garage itself, uh, but I can tell you it's past the wife test. Uh, my wife, my daughters, no one is complaining about the noise in the garage anymore. So the uh, AC Infinity fan and shrouds are doing their job, at least from that perspective. Uh, now, I do want to show you guys the temperatures, because if you look back at my last video with that unboxing in the initial setup, our inlet temperatures were in the 50 to 60 degree range, so not terribly different. It is a little bit cooler day today here in Southern California, getting a little bit of rain and, and some of that kind of April showers vibes. Um, but the outlet temperatures were significantly higher at stock. We were sitting at the high 80s, low 90s. And we've got to keep in mind, this is Celsius, not Fahrenheit for us Americans. So uh, it is significantly hotter than we'd like it to be. These ASICs survive up until 90, sometimes even 100 degrees Celsius. So we're not risking damage to the machine by leaving it stock, but it is running extremely hot, adding to the heat in the... Uh, garage itself and the atmosphere for the other miners, uh, and generally just wearing that machine down quicker and quicker the longer it runs at high temperatures. So sitting here with the, uh, the AC Infinity blower and the shrouds, we've got this down to a roughly 60, 61 degrees on average uh, in terms of our outlet temperature. So this is the, the temperature of the hash boards at the exhaust side of the machine where it's hottest. Um, and this is great to see. I mean, uh, hardware in the 60 degrees range in terms of Celsius, fantastic from a um, difficulty of mining perspective, right? Not a difficulty on the network, so to say, but, but the actual uh, impact that we're making to these ASIC chips by keeping them hot for so long. Um, these miners are interesting because unlike, you know, computer servers or cloud servers, they don't run... Um, up and down in terms of performance. They don't they don't hash up and then drop down to cool off like you may see a, a video server that Netflix uses, right? It's gonna jump up and down in terms of performance and heat. 
these run at full speed, full performance 24 seven. So keeping them cool is fantastic. Um, outlet temperatures, we saw even a, a degree drop there on that one. So averaging a solid 60, 61 degrees here is, is fantastic. If we jump over to the pool side, hum pool is showing us 22 and a half terahash on the 15 minute, almost 22 on the one hour and a little over 22 on the 24 hour. Now Bitmain claims this machine is 21 terahash per second. So seeing above that on our poolside data that actually decides what we get paid is fantastic to hear, right? Um, it's not uh, it's not any concern for hardware issues or warranty claims, or we are legitimately beating out the Bitmain advertised performance here, which is fantastic. And we're doing it at low temperatures that's going to make sure our miner can run for years to come. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed looking at uh, how to install a Fruition Design Shroud Kit and an AC Infinity blower fan. I will leave links to all of these pieces of hardware. So Nakamoto Mining for the fan spoofers, Fruition Designs for the shrouds, obviously AC Infinity for their Cloudline S9 uh, fan there, which is what we used here. So I'll put those links in the description. Um, if you guys like the video, hit like, subscribe. I'll I mean, I, I'm new to this, right? So I'd love to get feedback from you guys and hear exactly what you want to see changed in the next video. So um, let me know. I think next for me is going to be talking about some of my D-PIN projects. So I'm working on a next video that's going to cover um, Xnet Mobile, which is a new Helium Mobile competitor that has already signed a pretty exciting deal with AT&T to provide backhaul coverage. So a uh, lot of detail there um, and a lot more to dig into to help everyone kind of understand really what that means. But uh, passive income. You know, that's really what it means at the end of the day to us. It's passive income. So hit subscribe, hit like, let me know what you think in the comments and uh, stay tuned for the next one.